All right, so our next presentation, the third presentation and, and, and final one for this particular session is Max Collins. So Max, if you could come up. <laughs> Max is doing a double degree in Applied Maths and Data Science and uh, he's been working on a project called Old Perth, uh, which is about mapping historical images around Perth. Exceptional. Right. Over to you, Max. Um, all right. So as Andrew said, I'm Max, and I was working on the Old Perth project. So in this project, we were taking historical photographs taken from around Perth and the surrounding area, and we were putting them geolocationally on a map. So there were three key goals to the project. We wanted to geolocate images based on the image's metadata. So this is data that contains often a description of the image and occasionally location, but that's not always a given. We wanted to display any images we were able to geolocate on a map, so think Google Maps, but when you click on a location, it loads up an image from that location. And then we wanted to return the geolocation data to the state library, so they could help, um, that could help them augment their, the original image, image metadata in the catalog. So just as a bit of a background, catalogs are stored in a MARC format, which is a machine readable cataloging format, and it's a standard library format used around the world. Uh, the most commonly used one is the MARC 21 format, which was introduced in 1999. Um, now, while it is originally designed to be machine readable, meaning a machine can easily ac acquisition the data into itself from, from the database, it doesn't inherently mean it's easily passable. So what do I mean by that? I essentially mean that data is easily accessible but not easily extracted. So here we have an image of a man feeding swans and the catalogue uh, comment reads security guard feeding black swans by the pond outside Perth Domestic Airport. Now there is location text here, there is the Perth Domestic Airport but it's in amongst a description of an image which for a computer is difficult to, dis to discern. So essentially how does a computer get the Perth Domestic Airport out of a, a description of an image? It's not all bad. Some of, some of the descriptions are a lot simpler for a computer to use. So the place, Charles Street, Perth, a computer can easily get that. The comment field is fairly small. There's not a lot of processing required to do that. So to accomplish the task, we developed an open source Python package known as libclean. Um, libclean can read in mark catalogs. It can extract street addresses from comment metadata. Um, it has four geocoding capabilities to extract latitude longitude from street addresses and it possesses cloud saving and data dumps along with a, lot, a, a whole suite of abilities that allowed us to achieve the project outcomes. So the libclean data structure is incredibly simple. It's a photos are loaded into faux data objects. Faux data objects contain important information about the photo, so the, the height of the photo, the width, the all important comment field, and potentially a road number width if we were able to extract it. Multiple photos are loaded into a photo frame object, and a photo frame object is essentially a catalog of images. So the street address extraction works by using three regex passes. Regex is short for regular expression, and these match text strings within, within long fields of text. So the first pass that we use is a popular place search. Now this loads a list of known places from around Perth, so we're talking His Majesty's Theatre, Perth Concert Hall, Rotnest Island, among others. And it knows the locations of these places. It then searches each image to image's comment field for a mention of this place, and if one is found, it locates the image at that place. Um, if that's unable to locate an image, the next parser is called, which is the Perth City Street Parser. Um, this parser has a list of streets from within the Perth CBD, so St George's Terrace, Hay Street, streets within the city, and it, and it knows the location of those streets. It searches, searches the image's comment field for mentions of those streets, and if it's mentioned, it assumes that that's an address and begins an extraction process of a, a, isolating an address based on the city street. Now, if that doesn't work, we call the street delimiter search. Now, this is the most lenient of the three passes. Essentially, we load a list of terms that typically denote a street. So, street, obviously, uh, terrace, lane, avenue, road. And we search an image's comment field for mentions of these terms. Now, it's of note that this doesn't inherently always result in a street, because things like cycle and circuit could potentially be streets, but are also commonly used in just generic text. So what we do to sort of mitigate that problem is we load a list of phrasing terms. So things like the, on, a, she, he, thing, things that could denote that this is being used not in a street, but rather just in a freeform text and we search for street addresses based on that. So here we have 
an image along with its comment field. I'm not going to read you this, but essentially the takeaway is that there is an 892 Albany Highway East Victoria Park, which is a really nicely formatted street address within there, and LibClean is able to extract it. So how did it do that? Well, it began by isolating highway. It determined that that's a potential delimiter of a street. It then read backwards and isolated 892 Albany Highway before loading a list of known suburbs from Perth and surrounding areas and searching to the right of the address for a potential suburb match, which it found, East Victoria Park. And then we performed geocoding and were able to extract the correct field. So 892 Albany Highway, East Victoria Park with a longitude and latitude to go along with it. So forward geocoding is the process by which we take a structured street address and convert it to latitude longitude coordinates. That's how we were able to get the longitude latitude in the previous example. Um, LibClean utilizes the Mapify API, so that's short for Application Programming Interface, and it, think of it as a, a way for a program to do a Google search. Mapify essentially allows us to Google search an address, and Mapify will return a longitude latitude if that address is, address is valid. Um, of the 10,106 images we had access to, we were able to successfully geocode 4,247 of them, giving us a accuracy or a geocode accuracy of about 42%. Um, we then took a sample of 100 of the geocoded images. So of the 4,247 images that we located, we took a sample of 100 of them to try and test the accuracy of our locations. Um, 94 of these were located on the, the correct street. Now, numbering can be an issue for Mapify. Um, some of this is due to street address and numbering changing over the course of time, and others are due to building spanning multiple street addresses and Mapify not being able to handle that correctly. Um, any images that we failed to geocode were generally because they had either no location data or the location data present was much too complex to be able to pass. Um, we, now that we had extracted relevant information, we needed to be able to save it. And ideally, we wanted to be able to save it in a form that could be accessed by anyone using the package. Originally, this was going to be an SQL database, which we could query on and off whenever we needed to extract the information. However, it turned out that that would be limited to access only on the Curtin network, meaning if I went home, I would never be able to access the same catalog. So instead, we um, save the catalog as a JSON file, which is just a typical file format, and we have installed uh, Google Drive connectivity into LibClean, which allows us to save catalog files on a Google Drive, which can be accessed via an API. Again, we're just downloading a save file, and LibClean is able to access the client from there. So this gives us persistent saves across any LibClean usage. Um, from there, we needed to be able to update the website. So this is the Old Perth website that will display images on a Google Maps, if you will. Um, and we also needed to be able to generate the data dumps that would be given to the State Library. So to do this, we implemented a variety of different inbuilt functions within Python and used them to generate um, comma-separated or pipe-separated data dump files. It's just a format of data. And we use the FTPS, so that's File Transfer Protocol Secure, which is just a secure way to upload files to a server. And LibClean is able to correctly bundle the files that needed to be sent to the Old Perth website in order to update the images displayed on the Old Perth website. So the Old Perth website was based on a prototype developed in a previous Hive internship, which in turn was based on the source code of Old NYC, which was developed by Dan Vanderkam. Um, Old NYC does almost the exact same thing as Old Perth, except it operates in New York City. So here you've got these red dots which you can click on and they'll display images from around New York City. We wanted to port this to work in Perth and we wanted to add some other functionality. So what did we need to do? We needed to change social media icons. In the uh, old Perth prototype they didn't work and weren't correctly loading. We needed to update the date slider. The date slider allowed users to search for images based on the date that the image was taken and this limited the user to only being able to search for images up to the year 2000. So images beyond that you couldn't search for. Uh, the location search bar was centered on New York City, so if I searched for Hay Street and hit go, I would go to New York City. And it's a fair amount of scrolling to get back to Perth. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, various links and unnecessary page elements failed to work, so we had to clean that up as well. What we wanted to add was the ability to have image correction feedback forms. And this was key to what Old Perth would allow us to do. Essentially, users, if they, were, if they saw an image that was incorrectly located, could 
enter the correct location, and this could be sent back to us, and we could then fix it and improve old Perth. Um, we also wanted to have a random unlocated image viewer, which just means that of the images that LibClean wasn't able to locate, we wanted to display them in some fashion with the ability for users to locate them if they knew, knew where the image was. And we also wanted to determine what LibClean was extracting and what Mapify was returning, and that would be displayed on the page, but that was just to make sure the LibClean pipeline was working correctly. So this is the old Perth as we have now. It displays 4,247 images, which is the exact amount that LibClean was able to geolocate. Um, it generates image correction forms from the Google Forms um, uh, plugin that we've used. Um, if I can, I will briefly load it up just to give you a bit of an idea of how it operates. So. Functioning very similar to Google Maps, you scroll around, you can select images as you saw in the previous, oh it's slow now, um, in the previous slide, and these will load up. We can help fix it if the image is incorrect, and the date slider I mentioned earlier is in the top left hand corner, and it allows you to search for images based on their year that they were taken. Um, so the old Perth client is what we developed because we felt LibClean wasn't user friendly. It required an understanding of programming and a general understanding of how the old Perth site operated. So we developed the old Perth client, which is a user friendly version of LibClean. It's essentially a Windows executable that opens a terminal based interface. And from there you can read catalog files, geolocate images, importantly load correction files, which is paramount to old Perth's operation because we want to be able to continually improve the data quality. So as I've been talking about, we, this is the, the um, site logic of Old Perth. The Old Perth client is the centerpiece. Correction files and mark XML files are what is loaded in, mark XML files being image catalogs. From there, we perform the street address functionality. We query Mapify. Mapify can return latitude, longitude coordinates. We save the catalog to a Google Drive, and we can generate pipe-separated data dumps that can be given to the State Library, as I previously mentioned. The Old Perth client can then update the Old Perth website. The Old Perth website, in turn, generates correction CSV files that are then fed into the Old Perth client that goes to the Old Perth website. And this cyclic nature is what improves the Old Perth website. It continually operates, and the website's data will get continually better as a result. So we conducted some user testing on the website. Unfortunately, we only had 10 volunteers. Drat. Any statistical analysis I make on this has to be taken with a large quantity of salt. Um, we surveyed users on their experience, and generally it was quite good. We have seven out of the 10 users saying good, and three saying very good. Those three are my favorite. Um, <laughs> Uh, six of the users discovered photos relevant to them, and these were photos that were in places that they were familiar with and were image of things that they felt that they knew. Four didn't, that's unfortunate. Um, <laughs> all ten users felt that searching a catalogue by geolocation was more engaging than searching a, just a standard issue catalogue. So a standard issue catalogue being you search through images and you can search for specific tags within the comment field itself, but searching for geolocation was preferred. Um, and unfortunately, again, there were some bugs on the site. There are always, there are always bugs in any programming you do. <laughs> but um, since then, we have ironed the majority of them out, but images are still slow to, yo slow to load, which is something that we'd like to improve in future work. So LibClean is able to geolocate images based on the available metadata. So that's a plus for us. The Old Perth website is operational and over time will generate more correction CSV files that will be uh, loaded into the Old Perth client, which will just improve the overall data. Um, there is still a lot that could be done. We could do faster image loading by storing images locally on the server. Um, more catalogs could be loaded in. LibClean's capable of reading in and merging other catalogs. Um, and a backend could be developed allowing for automatic updates, which would allow the old Perth client to be essentially removed and the entire process to be automatic. Um, and we definitely need beta testers. So if you're willing, get in contact with us and we'll set you up to test our site. Thank you very much. <laughs>